For the next 20 minutes or so, I invite you to sit back and open your mind to a few new thoughts. These thoughts are neither right nor wrong, simply a perspective to inspire you to reflect on who you are, what you believe, and how and if you'd like to integrate the thoughts we consider in our time together. If you'd like to go on this journey with me, take a few deep breaths, relax, and take the next step towards wellness and grace. In the mornings, I like to take time to think big thoughts before I get involved with my work or projects and narrow my focus. I do some of my best thinking while doing the ordinary things of getting ready for the day. My patterns free up my mind to explore new realities. There's a definite routine to how I like to do things. My routines have evolved, changing, as my priorities change. My life changes as I have new experiences and thoughts. Some people would see my everyday patterns as karma. Our everyday choices as the karmic ripples of past actions. Now, karma has three parts. The potential or thought before an action, the action itself, and the ripples the action creates. Every movement of life is karma. It's potential action, measurable action, and the effects of an action simultaneously. Karma is a lovely serpent eating its tail sort of movement, an always flowing, never ending circle. The beginning is the middle is the end. Most people use the idea of karma to explain unexpected good or bad things that happen to them. We get into a car accident at a red light because of bad karma. We get the last cream filled donut because of good karma. We don't know why. We only know that we must deserve it. We use the word karma to try to make sense of mysterious events. I'd like to introduce a new thought. Karma as the natural balance of the universe. A necessary ebb and flow that sparks and maintains life. In effect, the ripples of karma are the natural response of an action. They could be our everyday way of moving through the world, our temporary emotions, or our belief system. They're the music and the dance of life, neither good nor bad. There are parts we enjoy and parts we don't. However, they're both necessary and arrive in equal measure. As explained in many spiritual traditions, we know joy because we know sadness or we know sadness because we know joy. Karmic ripples are overwhelmingly complex. We feel the ripples from 10,000 years ago, 100,000 years ago, the beginning of time. The ripples from our parents' actions and their parents and so on are our inheritance. Now the Oneida tribe believes we must envision seven generations forward before committing to any action. We must live with the choices our ancestors made while our descendants must live with the choices we make. As simple as inheriting green eyes and as complex as with whom we fall in love. These ripples or karma are the framework of reality. Big ideas like balance or karma are lovely. However, how do we apply them to our everyday life, say, in our relationships and work, or in how we treat someone on the street? Do we, or can we, even follow how our smallest actions, such as the whisper of a thought, affect our everyday reality? Or how can the most distasteful atrocities represent perfect balance? After all, no one asks to be victimized. Does karma mean you invite troubles into your life? Surely not. Well, what if we looked at every relationship, situation, or experience over the span of lifetimes, or generations, or millennia? In that light, we would see the pain some good intentions eventually caused, and the loving moments 
that resulted from bad intentions? Would we see the karmic ripples create realities which were neither better nor worse than another? In the growing picture of my lifetime, I've discovered that the ripples of all actions produce equal measure of pleasant and unpleasant consequences. As human players in this orchestra of life, it's difficult to hear the whole symphony when we're so focused on our own part. While it's easy to hear the music when we're sitting in the audience. Our lives are immediate and finite as well as infinite. In this light, what if life is inherently fair and more complicated than good and bad intentions and inherently unfair and simpler than control, manipulation, and intellect? When we were young, life was simpler. Most of us were taught about happily ever after and specific codes to live by and expect. Then after hard experiences, we determined that life is complications. Those complications inspire deep emotions ranging from joy to anger, because part of us holds on to the simplicity of happily ever after. If you work hard, stick by the rules, then your dreams should come true. This thirst for simplicity like justice or serenity creates some very uncomfortable karmic ripples. We lose or leave jobs and relationships because they don't fit our vision. We feel deeply hurt and act out of those feelings in our personal and community relationships. We believe we caused our injustices and so treat others unjustly. We generally perceive our choices as divine karmic balance, forgetting that these choices are not only the ripples of karma, but also the thought and act behind the next karmic event. The desire for simplicity actually complicates our lives. So is it possible, and should we, change the ripples of karma? Well, we're influencing them all the time, knowingly and unknowingly. Every time we take in a new thought or let in a new experience, we're changing our karma. When you stay consciously aware of your choices, you change your karma, perhaps even choosing how we define karma. Many deeper spiritual traditions espouse that karma, life, balance is inherently fair and more complicated than we can imagine. By the very definition of balance, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction even in extreme circumstances. There's a joy for every sadness, somewhere, sometime, somehow, and vice versa. In intimate relationships, for example, the more intimately we feel connection, the more powerfully we feel loss. In life, there are moments of perfection balanced out by imperfection, an action causing a ripple causing a thought, causing another action. So how does this look in our closest relationships? Possibly you envision a relationship where your needs are met, where we feel both connected and free to be ourselves. We feel security as well as adventure, love despite our shortcomings. In reality, perfect balance, all relationships come with natural and normal strains. What feels secure to us one moment feels confining in the next. What feels like freedom to one person feels like loneliness to the other. Our unique beliefs are the karmic ripples we see. By questioning everything we believe to be true, we find our own truths. The ripples we see and feel result from the actions that came before in perfect balance. For example, we feel intimacy because at times we feel distant. The more intimacy we feel, the more distance, physical, mental, or emotional, we need to maintain the balance. The more distance we keep, the more intimacy we need to maintain the balance as well. So what a physical or emotional distance is a karmic ripple of intimacy, 
either the idea of, desire for, or an actual intimacy. And physical and emotional intimacy comes when we find peace within our distance. In every relationship with ourselves, others, our jobs, or community, we decide every moment whether to stay or go. On some level, we have a general idea of and agree to the benefits and the drawbacks of our actions. Only after we experience them firsthand can we truly decide whether we'd like to continue on this karmic course or create change through our thoughts, words, and actions. The benefits of a choice can quickly become a drawback. Either way, it's the same quality seen from our changing perspective. Overall, karma believes that every relationship is the best it can be because it's in perfect balance. And as we learn and grow, we also change the balance, creating a different but equal set of new benefits and drawbacks. In this paradigm, life is karmically fair and we choose our experiences, actions, and karma, albeit sometimes unwittingly. So what are the karmic ripples of believing that life is fair and we choose our experience and relationships? The loveliest ripple is inner peace, which empowers, inspires, and encourages a more conscious state of mind for our next karmic creation. But what if the contemporary idea of happily ever after exists after all? What if, despite our best intentions, we actually deserve our hurts? Perhaps we need to try harder or learn more, open our hearts, surrender, turn our anger into love. Doesn't that create happily ever after? I'd like to suggest a koan or a question which encourages new thought. If you found or created happily ever after, what would you do with it? What would you do next? We can't go any higher, and if we don't move, we stagnate, wither, and pass away. To live and thrive, we would have to expand our idea of perfection to include all aspects of the human experience. Recognizing the perfection of an imperfect reality frees us from our expectations, the karmic ripples, which are being longing, judgmentalism, and hurt. When we free our mind, a whole new reality comes in. Nothing changes on the surface. We continue having our human life. We just give up looking for perfect. Wonderfully, as soon as we give up, believe happily ever after doesn't exist, we open our eyes to the beauty and wonder that surrounds us. Happiness, love, peace, and grace then manifest from the ripples of seeing perfection in our imperfect reality. They were there all the time. The reality we've been looking for can only come into being when we stop believing in it. In balance, the harder we believe and search for perfection, sometimes in denial, the more it doesn't exist for us. For example, when we hope for something and believe in rejection, it means a part of us believes perfection exists. Purposely not hoping, not believing in rejection, also means we believe in perfection. When we put down our fantasies, when hope and rejection both exist and don't exist, we not only can now perceive fairness and beauty, but it physically blossoms into our reality. By getting rid of the myth, we enjoy the reality and create more of the same. It doesn't matter who you are or who I am. Perfection and fairness through our limiting view doesn't exist. It's impossible. We get the same experience of sadness, joy, connection, disconnection, fulfillment and longing, no matter who or what we have a relationship with. When we stop believing in the idea of perfection, we recognize that perfection is here all around us. We spend the first half of our lives looking for miracles, and if we're lucky, the last half looking for something that isn't a miracle. 
When we believe karmic perfection exists as balance through the karmic ripples of past and present actions, we open our eyes, heart, and reality to a more attainable vision of happily ever after.